Hey guys, it's Brian and welcome back to my shop. So hey, uh, this is uh, episode number seven of my do-it-yourself supercar build series, which is going by the name of Project Split Decision. I didn't come up with the name, but I really liked it. So uh, there you have it. So we're Project Split Decision it is. So where we left off last was I needed to make motor mounts so I could finish getting the, this Ford Eliminator XS into my custom frame rail. Um, the problem was it was a little tricky because the motor mounts actually needed to be mounted right where this 45 degree angle was. So if you're a long time viewer of the series, you'll know I screwed up when I made these first frame rails. They were actually at a 17 inch drop instead of the 19 inch drop I needed. So I ended up, but I didn't throw it away. I ended up using that. And basically what I did was, well, you can see from this side, well, I basically cut them and then I split them and I took that split part and basically mirrored it onto where it needed to rest into the 45 degree angle and then built a motor mount off of that. Let me go ahead and pull this motor mount off so you can kind of see it a little bit better. Hold on a second. <laughs> Marvin Devine. Jordan. So this is the actual Ford motor mount. This is the Ford Performance went out of Mustang. And as I said, here's kind of the motor mount that I kind of came up with. So one side kind of looks more like a traditional mount, kind of squared off, boxed off with the uh, four inch hole. This is a four inch pipe. And then the other one is the frame rail that actually uh, was cut open. So this just kind of drops right in here and uh, really works out pretty nice. So the problem I've got now though, is I really want to tie these two motor mounts together. So the front, uh, the right and left side. But if you can't see this too well, hold on. Let me, uh, let me lift the motor up here. <laughs> so here's what the problem is. A while ago, I actually, this is the second oil pan I've actually had on this motor. So the first oil pan was mounted in the rear, really a large thing, very low, uh, sat very low. It held it like 12 quarts. It was from Ford Racing. I opted to put this oil pan in because when you put it in the back here, it hit the it hit these rails right here that used to exist. But I cut those rails out, so I don't have that problem anymore. I really want to be able to tie the motor mount from here to here, but obviously this is going to be in the way. So I'm going to put in oil pan number three. Okay, this is a low profile job. And obviously it's the rear sump versus the sub front that I got on right now. It's going to allow me to run that pipe, or I'm sorry, run that uh, inch and a half inch pipe across there and allow me to tie those two motor mounts together. The only problem is, while I had that laying around, I actually don't have a pickup tube for it, so I got to order that today. So we're going to put this motor aside for right now and go ahead and start focusing on the front. Got a plan there. I'm getting rid of all the old C6 uh, frame and build my own frame and so uh, let's go ahead and get started on that now so now it's time to fix the front end it may look like it's attached but it actually isn't it is i cut it off in the last video because i needed a little bit more leg room so where are we at right now so we've got the car at 107.7 inches almost 108 inches so it's about an inch longer than the uh, c8 corvette and a little bit longer than a lamborghini aventador as well the um what I originally wanted to do was try to salvage the C6 uh, front cradle here, or the front clip, but it's really pretty ugly. And I'm also not gonna be able to use these, uh, these shock positions anyway, because I wanna run a cantilever suspension. So I'd have to cut all this out as well. So with that in mind, um, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and completely rebuild the front. And to do that, I'll kind of give you some, uh, some highlights here. So the solution I've come up with is I'm going to use these uh, half inch plates and they have actually been cut at a specific angle to mimic the angle of the position that Corvette came up with. Uh, it's actually square on the bottom. It's going to be cut, come across here like this uh, and I'm going to weld that to a two by four. This edge here actually needs to sit uh, basically flat or level with the outside here. So the, uh, what makes the most sense is going to be using a, a two by four right there. Um, that will actually meet up to a three by two, or three by three rather, this, this spot right here in relationship to that spot right there, 
if you run a line straight across there, that's a three inch drop. Just happened to work out that way, uh, lucky me. So I'm gonna run a three by three here, a two by four here, cap it off with this plate so I can reattach the suspension arms and then have another obviously edge right here. This car is gonna be a lot shorter. If I have to make any crash impact, it's all gonna be made out of aluminum. So this, I'm just gonna box this in to have it really, really short. That's also gonna let me be pretty creative with the uh, hood lines. I really want it to kind of plunge down, have the uh, fenders basically up higher and then have the uh, center part of the hood basically plunge down to the ground there. Uh, give me a little bit better visibility. It's, it's pretty hard to see from, uh, from that far away. All right, so that's what we gotta do. So uh, what we need to do is get rid of this stuff and let's start fabricating. So it turned out a little bit differently than I kind of originally described it there. Um, what I ended up doing is running a two by four. I originally thought it wasn't gonna have enough clearance, uh, but actually I have enough clearance without even pocketing this. So um, that allowed for uh, a little bit more meat to be able to weld to, so to have an overlap there. So instead of having the one inch overlap, I've got a two inch overlap. Um, then I've got obviously the three by two and a little cap here. And then in the very front is um, a, three, a three by two as well. Then start looking at the actual rest of the chassis part. So this is actually a two by four. And let me just go ahead and turn this a little bit. So here's the rest of the chassis. Basically it's a two by four and got some one by three. Um, the chassis right now really isn't structurally sound. I mean, well, it's, it's structurally sound. It's, it's actually one solid piece and I can move it around the shop but I've got to do a lot more work. It's going to have to have the roll cage installed. I've actually got to make that roll cage and, and actually all the rest of the actual structural members. Uh, those are all going to be typically going to be made out of tubing, uh, probably using a one and five eighths inch tubing for most of that and some half inch as well. Um, and well, and also uh, some uh, inch and a half. So anyway, so this is uh, basically where we stand right now. It's probably a good spot for me to go ahead and wrap up this episode and uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what we got to do next. So next up, I've got to do it all over again. I'm actually not going to bore you with all those details. I'm going to go ahead and take all the parts here I've got, go ahead and make a second frame and the next video will actually be the installing of the Tesla motor in this frame. So until then, I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, uh, please consider subscribing and hit the notification bell. And as always, thanks for watching.